Hey, hey, hey! Welcome back to my channel. It's Christian here and you're tuned in for more of my two cents. Now, don't let the beehive come swarming around me for this video, but I gotta give my opinion on all things. Well, before I do so, let me give you the three points that matter most before we start talking. Number one, you are not alone. Number two, you're not crazy. Number three, God, your creator still loves you. All right, so Beyonce came out with the Renaissance album and the songs are definitely cool. They're different. It's giving that she has evolved as an artist. This is something that a lot of people don't like. This is something that um, a lot of people aren't accustomed to, but they're growing to, um, they're growing it's growing on them. I'll say that. They're growing to accept it, to like it. It's Beyonce. We all gonna love it. Mm, give us another month, okay? Um, <laughs> but one song in particular has caused a ruckus at church, and that would be Church Girl. It would be Church Girl that's out here causing problems. Now, at first, there was a problem because, and I'm gonna pull up the lyrics for y'all because I am so prepared and I gotta like um, do my research on the, on the camera. So <laughs> the, there was first a problem with the situation that came up initially because of the sample of Twinkie Clark's, you know, song, music. And at first it was like a respect thing. Like people were saying, you know, like respect. She out here, play, play, you know, paying homage. Is it homage or homage? I just don't like the, the silent letters. Homage. Paying homage. Okay? Um, <laughs> she was out here play, paying homage to Twinkie. And y'all have to know that with samples and getting these things cleared, that comes with a check. And this is a business. This is entertainment. Okay? Twinkie is out here, you to the sunshine in my life. Twinkie is like, you brought the sunshine, you brought the lifeline, you pulled out the checkbook, you signed it, you deposited it, and God loves you. Okay? Twinkie did what Twinkie needed to do from a business perspective. Now, if you don't get that, that's your business. But let me tell you something because I operate in logic. I do not operate in systems and in um, cultish groupthink. Business is business, okay? If somebody calls me today and say they want my product white labeled, private labeled, they just want me to produce it and then they put their name on it. Computer, where are you? Do, 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 that's gonna cost you this much, right? It can be done because it's business. So for Beyonce to want to sample anything from you, you're not telling her no. You're not because it's business. So I got it from that perspective when it first, you know, came out that she had sampled, you know, a Twinkie Clark song or music or whatever. And it was like, okay, cool. I didn't care. Like, I'm pretty sure any gospel artist would have been happy and elated and honored to have their music um, sampled by Beyonce, reconstructed or whatever it was that she did with a lot of the songs that are on the album. And it's respect. Like, it's a thing of respect in that industry. But for whatever reason, people in church love to feel disrespected. And isn't it funny? <laughs> That's my little signature. Isn't it funny how? Isn't it funny that the people in church that say that we need to come out and be separate are always offended when the church actually when the church is actually um at the forefront of culture and trending topics or um shifts in society for the good. It's always a problem. I, I saw, you know, over the summer with Kurt Franklin touring with the, the Maverick City, Maverick City group or whatever. People were posting him, you know, church people were posting him, judging him for his dance, judging him for his attire, for what he looks like and, you know, his, whatever, whether he wears makeup, had on little boots with heels on it, whatever, tight pants. And I just started thinking, um... Some people in church are just never going to change. Even if the times are changing, if culture is shifting and there are people in church 
and in the religious world and sector that's actually at the forefront of some of these movements that are making church and spirituality more popular, cool, accessible, relatable, authentic. It's people in the background that's like, y'all ain't doing it right. And it's too much fun. Y'all are too happy serving the Lord. That's disgusting to me. That's actually disturbing to me that there are people that feel like that, right? Um, and I know people who are like that, um, but I'm not going to say no names, but I know people personally who are like that. They don't like people to be happy in claiming Christianity. You have got to be suffering. That is a prerequisite. If you went to college, you know what a prereq is. You got to take this class first in order to get to this class. Well, we should start down here. You got to take this class. No, pre. You got to take this class first to get here. It's a prerequisite. Did you take statistics? Da -da -da -da? Did you take calculus? Da -da -da -da? Nope, you can't take stats this because you didn't take this prerequisite. Struggling, sadness, brokenness, trauma is a prerequisite for salvation. Are you struggling? No? Okay, you're going to hell. Because I told you to struggle. Struggle or no salvation? But people not, people not listening. People think that this is a game, that this is a joke, that this isn't real. It's very much so real. Struggle, like I said, or you're going to hell. So that's how I feel with the church movements and the culture shift that's happening right now in music, with the award shows. There was some drama with the award show, uh, the Stella Awards. And people talking about, you know, certain parts of gospel music has gone down right like there are no more choirs ricky dillard you know talked about being the pioneer of that and all of those things and it's like but there's a shift there are no more choirs ricky there are no more choirs donald we out here with the praise teams we have ensembles okay we have ensembles now we don't have to have a whole choir with 52 people and five microphones we have ensembles that's okay it's still relevant. Gospel music is still relevant. You all are still being successful. Why are you upset? Why are you complaining? Why are you angry? Because they can't control the narrative. They can't control the landscape anymore. So with this, Twinkie being able to tap into the coin because Beyonce's team reached out and wanted to sample her music. That's a win for the gospel industry. That means that your work, your, your work and your art has lived on beyond its relevancy in a certain time frame, like not, not time frame, but with, within a certain era. So the era when the Clark sisters were popular and all of that and building their legacy has passed. But here we are decades later, you have a world renowned artist, an icon, a living icon and legend coming to another legend and asking to pay to use your music. Who finna say no? Why are people in the church so possessive and angry? Why y'all so angry? Y'all don't mind talking about the world in church. Y'all don't mind talking about the world in church. Y'all don't mind judging the world in church. Using them as examples and samples to degrade and demean them when their lifestyles are not meant to be a representation of how anyone in church should live. But y'all talk about them all the time. But when they knock on y'all y'all people door to represent y'all in a positive way and to bring notoriety to you, I'm pretty sure Twinkies went up. That's the sound of the price going up. But the world had to actually add value to Twinkie because the church only speaks of it being a good thing. The world, the church will only say, oh, Twinkie is a legend, Twinkie is this, but the church ain't out here paying Twinkie to show up and play. The world ain't out here booking Twinkie and taking, I mean, the church ain't out here booking Twinkie and paying Twinkie. The world is seeing the value in paying the cost. Watch your mouth. That's all I can say. Always want to talk about touch not my anointing to do not profit no harm. Touch not the world at this point. Because the world is out here taking care of your own. Because y'all don't do it. Y'all are disposing throwaway people quick when they no longer serve you. 
but that's not the business that I'm in. So let me keep going. For the church girl lyrics, because it then became a problem where you have the pastor, a very well-known pastor, who decided to have a problem with the lyrics and pretty much denouncing it and saying that Beyonce needs to give his give her life to the Lord, that she pretty much is destined to hell. Pastor, uh, well, Bishop Patrick Wooden. And he has a problem with the silence of the church. And he's a holiness preacher, a holiness preacher. And, you know, Bishop Wooden, Patrick, I'm just going to call him Patrick because I don't go to church, so I don't have to refer to him as Bishop. Um, Wooden, Patrick Wooden had a problem with Beyonce's song. And I'm going to read some of the lyrics here. Um, let's see. <laughs> I'll drop it like a thotty, drop it like a thotty. I said, now pop it like a thotty, pop it like a thotty. You bad. Must say. Now drop it like a thotty, drop it like a thotty. You bad. Church girl, church girls acting loose. Bad girls acting snotty. You bad. Let it go, girl. Let it go. Let it out, girl. Let it out. Twerk that ass like you came up out the south, girl. Ooh, ooh. I said, now drop it like a thotty. Drop it like a thotty, you bad. Bad girl acting naughty. Church girl, don't hurt nobody. You can be my daddy if you want to. You can, oh, you, you can be my daddy if you want to. You can get it tatted if you want to. You can get it tatted if you want to. She ain't trying to hurt nobody. I need y'all to understand this is my first time reading these lyrics um and it's artful expression and I will say this no one owns the rights to church girl like the word or the representation and I'm going to dare to say something that may offend you let me move closer to the camera This is a description of some church girls that I know. Um, this is a description of some of the behavior that I exhibited as a church girl growing up, like as a teenager. Um, I went to church, but church wasn't in me. Um, I would be considered a church girl because my mama was a minister and I was in church on Monday, Wednesdays, twice on Sundays, and sometimes Friday nights for evangel you know, evangelistic night sometimes for the you know the shut-in so I was a church girl by all mean and definition and I was out there doing what I wanted to do and it wasn't for the Lord I was not there winning souls honey okay I was not there winning souls but I was out there dropping it low authenticity right and relatability this is artful expression and it's also what a lot of people in church are doing Explain to me why you probably know someone that goes to church religiously and consistently and they're pregnant but don't have no husband. Explain to me how you know someone right now that's sleeping with someone's husband who goes to church. Is it you? Explain to me right now how your pastor probably has a girlfriend and a wife on the side and a baby on the way with someone that goes to church. Is it you? Explain to me right now how your pastor is probably engaged in homosexual activity while he has a wife and a family preaching against it on a regular basis. Is it you? So if we're going to take offense to the church girl lyrics, but not take offense to the church girl and boy behavior. Who are we really mad at? Is it Beyonce? Is it Beyonce? Or is she literally becoming a voice of expression for people who are doing what they want to do anyway? Isn't it amazing how there are a lot of people who start in the church. They have church roots. So many of us, especially in the African-American culture, our grandmas, our aunties, our cousins, our parents, someone has a church 
root somewhere in them. If your pat, if your father wasn't a pastor, your uncle, your cousin, your brother, a deacon, something, all of us as black people have a church connection. All of us have a church connection. Even if you spent the night at somebody's house, but you had to go to church with them on Sunday, one of your friends, all of us black people have a church connection. And this will have to be its own video of why I am now more of a believer in the theory and the concept that religion was given to us for mental control and bondage. Because for black people more than any other ethnicity in the world, we are some of the most devout religious, spiritual um, terrorists that I can think of. Been harassed or bothered by a Muslim. I've never been harassed or bothered by a, a Buddhist, a Jehovah's Witness. Ooh, child, I'm hungry, my stomach growling. I ain't never been harassed by no other religion for my beliefs. But Christians? My God, will fight you to the death for something they don't even follow to the T. No, no, I'll take that back. They'll fight you to the death for something they don't even live in their own life. You don't even demonstrate it in your life, but you'll fight me to the death over it for not doing it. Christians don't live what they preach, but will judge you by the same book that they don't even follow. They don't practice what they preach but they expect everybody else to. They say one thing and do another. They say one thing and they're guilty of it themselves of everything else that, they, that you shouldn't be doing. If this is your problem with the Sun Church Girls, no, nah, the lyrics ain't something I would play for my daughter to listen to. It ain't a song I'm finna go turn on and dance and clean up the house to. But if you like it, I don't care. Patrick? Wooden, Bishop, focus on the scripture. You're dibbing and dabbing in something you don't have a trademark on. You don't own church girl. She ain't out here offending nobody but those who probably have a daughter, a cousin, a sister, or them themselves. They themselves are guilty of feeling, doing, acting out in a church, in a church setting or under a church, a churchy guise. People always get bothered when you start sweeping around their front door. She not poking a bear. You just don't like her artistic expression. And I think I saw where, um, well, I, I'm not, I think I know I did. Dietrich Haddon had posted about it. And then uh, Mama Tina, because child, if, if Tina, if Tina Knowles Lawson ain't going to do nothing. Tina Knowles Lawson is about to make sure you raise up off her daughter. Okay professionally and swiftly and so tina lawson reposted dietrich Haddon's post as well as commented on it and said amen artistic expression it's just so amazing to me how the church has been able to infiltrate the world take the world's music the sound the vibrancy um the gyrating all of that stuff utilize people from the world people who live in the world have musicians that don't even go to church. Just pay them because they need a, a, a keyboardist and a, a, a bass player. So they are here paying musicians, period. But they don't live worth two nickels rubbed together on a hot, sticky, sunny day. Y'all don't mind tapping into the, the gifts. <laughs> but you do mind other gifted people being influenced and using something from the church. Let it go. Find you another sermon to preach on. Talk about some of these pastors that's out here living double lives. Right? Focus on yourself. Do that. Like y'all love to say, judgment starts in the church. In the house first. And some of y'all then walked off from your own step. And it's a mess in there. Leave Beyonce alone. Twinkie got her coin. You need to go focus on your flock. That's what I'm going to say about this. I'm not saying I condone the lyrics. Personally, it ain't my taste of music. 
But what I am going to tell you is that if you listen to these lyrics and were so offended by it, go back to your house and make sure your members, your flock, have a stable foundation, solid principles and teaching for them to live a modest, chaste life. You can't control what other adults are going to do. If they want to drop it like a thotty, if they want to act like a bad girl and be naughty and not hurt nobody, that's their business. Do you get your tithe? Are you still getting your offerings? Are you still living in that house free and paid for by the ministry? Are you still driving in luxury? Do you have to work a nine to five, Bishop Wooten? I didn't think so. Leave Beyonce alone. Okay, and like people say it, and I believe it. I agree with it. I don't usually do well with going by what other people say, but I believe this. If Beyonce would have cut the church a check, he wouldn't have had a problem with that. So, speaking out on things that, that, that does not concern the church world and sector is out of your league. Stay in your lane. God is not being disrespected with the term church girl. You're offended. You are offended. All of y'all that want to be Jesus Christ juniors need to really ask yourself, do you, do you think that God cares about Beyonce's church girl song? No. No. All right. And that would be why you need to leave it alone. So that's my take on that. Shout out to Twink Clark for understanding the assignment and the mission, which is the vision to always be able to collect your coin and to have your legacy live on. Because that matters. Like I said, the church world may be done with her. She not getting booked. She not busy. She probably may not be able to sustain that level of, you know, uh, shows and engagement and concerts and things like that because of health reasons or age. But she's still able to make a living off of work that God gifted her to create. Twinkie probably paid her tithes off that check that Beyonce gave her. I don't know, but I'm just saying probably. So that still benefited the kingdom, right? But y'all out here want to cut everybody off at the knees and the ankles because you're upset. Get away from me with that. All right. Okay. So that's that on that topic. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about the, the whole debacle, the whole church girl drama. Not so much the lyrics because it's artistic expression. And like I said, a lot of us have been out here doing the things that she listed in this song. Whatever. My focus is on the church. Why do we... No. Oh my God, no. Why do y'all keep on speaking on things that's not in the church? Focus on the church. The word church girl is not affecting your church. Focus on your church. Focus on the church, the body. Make sure the body is healthy, okay? All right. Um, if you enjoyed the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We would love to add you to our Two Cents crew. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.